Hey everyone, my name is Alex and welcome to another Civ 6 video. Now in probably the most bizarre video update yet, probably one of the most bizarre video updates I've ever seen, but the funniest. We got the news that everyone is getting access to the brand new Barbarian Clans game mode in Civilization 6. So no matter what platform you're playing on, no matter what um, DLC you've bought, you will get access to this game mode. Now this game mode looks very, very good. I have to admit out of all the updates we've got, especially the free ones, this is the one I'm probably most excited about. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to kind of go over some of the things you may have missed, the key bits about this game mode. I'm also going to give some thoughts but before we do all that i just want to say thank goodness we now know why kevin had a barbarian statue in the december update the world now makes sense to me again just a quick note as well he was playing with a catapult at the end of this update so i wonder if that's a hint for some content coming in the future too so the very basics of this mean that there are going to be six barbarian clans added into this game mode now with this game mode obviously you can toggle it on and off you don't have to play with this but if you decide to play with it there will be six barbarian clans um, within the game now these clans are different and appear in specific locations for example the hills clan can appear near hills whereas the rover clan will appear near horses we didn't get any information on what the other four are but i'm interested to see exactly kind of what these clans are the other ones we don't know about um i imagine they'll kind of just fit certain terrain and certain resources uh, but it will be cool to find out now clans can build unique units from civilizations which are not present in that specific game now as i'll mention later on this is very very big because if you don't have the aztecs in your game for example one of the clans could end up getting access to the eagle warrior now it's pretty obvious why this is important having access to the eagle warrior early on in the game some other civs unique unit is pretty useful to uh, to you, I think. So how do you do things such as hire units from a barbarian camp? Well, this all comes down to the new improved diplomacy options you have with these new barbarian clans. So there are four main diplomacy options. You can bribe the barbarian clan, which means essentially you just spend a little bit of money to keep them away from you to stop them raiding and causing you chaos. I think that's probably going to be worth it at certain points because I've definitely been in games where barbarians are so frustrating, they're so disruptive that it's probably worth paying them a little bit of gold just to go away. The second option you have, and this is how you would hire a unit from our barbarian clan, is the hire option. This means that you pay something, well in the video it showed play, paying 102 gold for a eagle warrior unit. Now that could be really useful to you, obviously it gets you access to somebody else's unique unit or one of somebody else's unique unit. So that's very good and could actually put you in quite a strong position early on in the game, especially when there's not so many units about. The third option is to spend gold to encourage the clan to attack another nearby civilization or city-state. This for me is probably the most interesting one. You could definitely use this option to destabilize a neighbor, especially if that clan's got a really powerful unit at that point. If that clan had a, an eagle warrior or a number of eagle warriors, that's going to really cause trouble for your neighbors and it's probably worth just destabilizing them so you can go and claim land or or whatever else you want to do that you're competing with them for. So that's, I think that's going to be worth it. But obviously be careful as well, because if people are hiring barbarian clans to come and attack you, that's going to be pretty frustrating. But that's going to add another layer to the barbarians. And the final diplomacy option you have with the barbarians is to kind of pay for your units back. So if one of your builders get kidnapped by barbarians, you can pay to have them back. That's obviously very annoying because just don't get them kidnapped in the first place. But if you really need a unit for whatever reason and you think it's worth paying the ransom, you can do that instead of having to chase them across the map back to the camp and defeat them that way. Now, there is one last thing I want to mention when it comes to dealing with barbarians. Obviously, barbarians, traditionally in Civ 6, you just kind of, you get them out of the camp, you get in the camp, you get the money reward. They're gone forever. You can still do that. You can still essentially break into their camp, kill all their units and do what is now known as dispersing. That just essentially does what it's always done. It just gives you the money and the barbarians are gone. However, there is a new option. You can now raid barbarian um, clans. What that means is you get a small pay payment, a small one-off payment, and then the clan will still exist. When I first saw this, I thought maybe there's a strategy to be had in just keeping raiding 
these camps over and over again. You know, you'll be getting 30 gold every turn if you did that. You can't do that. You can only raid camps one every ten, once every 10 turns. So maybe it is worth keeping them around, but you're not going to be able to raid them every single turn. The next bit I want to talk about is that this new game mode allows barbarian clans to convert into city-states eventually. So there is an end in sight for the barbarians to actually be civilized people. Now, this all depends on how the player interacts with the clan though, because the player's actions, and presumably the actions of the AI too, add and subtract towards barbarian clans progressing towards city-state stature. So, the options I've just read out all have different modifiers for for um, a barbarian clan's progress towards a city-state. For example, if you bribe a barbarian clan, they will actually get eight points towards city-state conversion. If you send the barbarian clan to raid your neighbors, however, then they will lose five points towards city-state conversion. So that is how your actions and how you deal with these barbarian clans affects their progress towards city-states. Now, as you can see, the, you can monitor the progress by looking at the blue bar above the barbarian clan. Um, and once they get to fill the blue bar up, they will become a city-state. They actually spawn into a pre-existing city-state. So they're not completely new city-states added to the game. They do turn into a pre-existing city-state. So city-state is very useful in Civ 6. It probably will be worth your time to turn some of these barbarian clans into city-states. Um... And it'll definitely be interesting to see just how you're going to get the balance right between raiding them, between dispersing them, and between trying to progress them towards becoming city-states. So you can work with them, become suzerain, and get those bonuses. Now the final point I want to make in this video is that it's absolutely fantastic in my opinion that they are adding greater depth to mechanics such as this. I think there's so many ways that Civ 6 could yet go into even more detail. We talked about city-states in this video. City-state diplomacy could go to levels so much higher. I've been calling for a Civ for quite a while that can actually integrate city-states into its empire somehow. And I think that would be a really interesting mechanic. But yeah, it's nice to see that they're still updating the game. They're still adding great detail and immersion to the game. And it's just so fun to see new stuff arrive. And especially when everybody can play it. Thank you so much for watching this video today to watch another one of our Civ 6 videos and find out what big civs I think are missing from Civ 6 right now. Then check out the video in the box on screen. Make sure you hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more Civ 6 content. My name is Alex and I will see you in another video soon.